Alright. Can't go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, start the presentation. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Ken. My nickname is Power Cycle. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, notice deploying, specifically uh, scanning and pivoting. Uh, first off, about me. I usually hang out on the FNet on all the uh, uh, open source uh, chat channels. My favorite is OpenWRT, which is run on uh, this router here and a couple of the others. I highly recommend, if you're not doing anything, get involved in OpenWRT and start playing around with it. There's nothing as cheap, it's simple, it's easy to screw up and bring back to life as that. Um, basically, for the last three years, I've been a DDoS defense engineer. So I've been defending against botnets, writing firewall rules, analyzing networks, um, stuff like that. So I do a lot of the stuff like on the wire. Um, a lot of the other developers are much better at the actual exploits about popping a specific box. My view of it is mostly just what's on the wire and what's on the network. So um, the three things I want to talk about are uh, in-map, DB autopong, and pivoting. And um, basically, this is the uh, the scenario that any hack goes through when you're uh, popping a box. Uh, basically, footprinting is figuring out who you want to attack, whether it be like the Brown Hotel, you would just say, you don't even know what their IP address is, you just know <coughs> who you're targeting. Foot scanning is figuring out who they are, what IPs they've got registered to them, what their uh, website is, things like that. So once you get to in scanning and enumeration, um, that's it, essentially what NMAP is. NMAP will only tell you what the IP address is, and it will try to figure out what service is running on that port. NMAP does not do any exploit at all. Um, it, it's very focused on that. The reason um, I use NMAP, uh, and a lot of people do, is it's free. It's free for personal use. It's free for commercial use. Nessus is another great scanner. It's arguably better than NMAP. Um, but it's only free for personal use. If you try to use it in a corporate environment, it's like $1,000 per license. Um, NMAP has a lot of scripting in it that you can try to specifically figure out if you've got a specific service that you're looking for and you want to do a specific test to test for that service, you can add scripts to NMAP. It, it is really, really large. Um, but the uh, gaining access, the escalation, the back door is really what Metasploit is. Um, really having the two things together is what works. If you don't know what you're going to exploit, if you don't know who to exploit, uh, Metasploit won't give you anything. This is why Metasploit specifically imports in-map data. You can in-map from anywhere, save that file as an XML file, bring it back to your Metasploit uh, point, and then import it. So you don't have to do the scan from the box. You can take scans that you've accumulated over a week, bring them back, load them in the database, and then try to exploit them. Um, okay. This is uh, this first command is sudo in map, sudo in map over Mac, uh, Apple, TCP trace. I won't read the whole thing right now. But um, this is the example of my ultimate uh, in map scan. Um, the, uh, I've got these uh, two slides here. All of these down at the bottom explain exactly what each of those options are. So I'll take some time to, to go through it all. Um, first off, you want to run nmap as the root user. If you don't run sudo nmap or run it as root, you cannot do a stealth scan on a, TC, on a, on a TCP system. The reason is a regular user is not allowed to talk directly to the interface. The root user is allowed to talk directly to the interface. The root user can override the TCP stack. If you all know what the three-way handshake is for, for a TCP session, you have your SYN, your SYNAC, then you have the ACK, then you push something, you ACK the other side, then you FIN, FINAC, FINAC, FIN, and you close. Any regular program that, you're, you, that you use is not allowed to violate the TCP stack. NMAP specifically violates it so that the other system never gets a fin. That's essentially what the uh, dash SS on there, which says uh, this stealth scan. 
if you have monitoring on the network or specifically monitoring on that port, on that host, many monitoring uh, software, especially if it's on the uh, kernel itself, for instance, if it's Apache that you're running, Apache is not going to know that the port was open for port 80 if no data ever comes to the port. If no data ever comes to the port, then nothing gets logged. If nothing gets logged, then no one knows you scan them. This is the reason you run it at, as root. This is also the reason when you run MSF console, you need to run sudo MSF console so that you're running as root if you run nmap from inside that. You cannot break the TCP stack unless you're root. Um, that's, that right there is probably the most important option. Um, but I'll go through, uh, through some of the others and tell you how and why. Um, the first is the uh, spoof MAC address. Nmap will let you spoof just about anything. You can spoof IP addresses, you can also spoof your MAC. And you can say, just give me a random Apple. You can, you can say, give me a random Linux, a random Windows, or you can specify a MAC address if you want to spoof something specific. Um, there are some problems with this when you're when you're scanning. I've had it work and not work, so sometimes I take it off, sometimes I, I don't. But it's only for the local LAN. Whoever's whoever's your DHCP server is going to be logging your MAC address. If you've got a scan and you spoof something else, then it's it becomes much more confusing. Um, but basically, that's the first step. You want to obfuscate who you are locally. Um, the second is trace route. Because I do so much networking, I run a trace route on basically every IP address I analyze and look at. Nmap will include in its output the trace route to you. Um, here locally, because we're just one hop away from everything, it really doesn't matter. But if you're in Detroit and your target's in Dallas, it's a really good idea to know what's between you, especially the hop right before your target. Because as soon as you pop the target, you want to turn around and pivot and look at Who's the router that controls that IP address? Where did he get his stuff from? And who else is that router controlling? Um, next one, data length nine. Um, in an effort to hide its scan, Nmap will add extra data on the end of any packet it sends to confuse any analyzer that's trying to read those packets. Um, the data length is how big the random bytes are on the end of it. Um, you can set it for anything, just from my experience, if I added nine on it, that would fill out an entire TCP packet um, without making a second packet for that one scan that I was doing. Um, the next option, dash F, goes along perfectly with the data length. What I'm trying to do is fill an entire packet without going over that. But then dash F cuts up those packets into eight byte segments. Um, it's essentially like setting your MTU to like 400. Normal MTUs are uh, 1600s, 1500s, something like that. Um, what you're doing is if the IDS has profiles for the scans that you're doing, especially if you're scanning scripts, um, if you've got a script that scans for a particular port or something like that, um, you can have your IDS sit there and look for these, these packets that come in. If you do a dash F, it's going to splice up your packets. Unless the IDS on the other side recompiles all of the packets, it's not going to see the signature. Um, <coughs> next option, dash uh, D. These are for decoys. This is where Nmap, uh, its ability to spoof IP addresses, comes in pretty handy. Even though you're doing a stealth sin, stealth, uh, sin scan of the target, um, you're still going to try to, to uh, when you find an open port, you're still going to try to verify that port. You're still going to, to try to verify what OS it is, other things. So there's going to be some trace that you scan the box no matter what. What the decoys allow you to do is throw a bunch of other IPs and requests at the same box so that you become one of six scans, or you can become one of a hundred scans, basically any number you want to. Um, so uh, what I've done here is, on the first IP address where it says 200-200, <coughs> that's an example of